What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about low carb diets. Finally, the study all of you low carbers have been waiting for, the study that proves that low carb is superior. I'm just kidding. So I started getting tagged in, uh, on all social media platforms about a meta-analysis that had just come out by David Ludwig. Now for those who are not familiar, David Ludwig is a researcher at Harvard. He is a big proponent of the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity and uh, is someone who believes that low carbohydrate diets are superior to uh, energy matched non low carbohydrate diets. And he did a reanalysis of Kevin Hall's 2017 meta analysis where they looked at 29 controlled feeding studies that were matched for protein and looked at how they affected fat loss and energy expenditure. So in Hall's meta-analysis, basically what they showed was that fat loss was basically not different when you varied the carbohydrate and fat amounts in different diets across a bunch of different studies. And the important thing was these studies all either were inpatient or the food was provided to the participants. So very, very little chance for uh, problems with adherence. Not perfect, but really good. So he saw really no difference in, in fat loss. In fact, there was a little bit of a trend for better fat loss in the low fat diets. Uh, and then in, when they looked at energy expenditure, uh, it kind of trended that way as well. Uh, energy expenditure tended to be a little bit better in the low fat diets. Now, that being said, it was a very small amount I don't think it was physiologically meaningful and certainly I would never encourage somebody to eat a low fat diet if they felt better on a low carb diet and that was easier for them to, to adhere to. In this meta-analysis, Ludwig separates out uh, studies that were either less than 17 days or more than 17 days and showed that if they were more than 17 days, there was actually a big boost to energy expenditure on a low carb diet. Now people started tagging me in this, Sean Baker tagged me in this, you know, saying, see, you were wrong. This proves that low carb is better. Well, data is the data. So I don't really get upset about studies, but I went in and read the study and I'm not very impressed. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not useful data, but with anything, you can't just take the researcher's word for it. You have to actually read it. Now, this is gonna get dense and there's a lot of technical jargon, but I'm gonna do my best to provide a synopsis of why I don't believe that this demonstrates a clear advantage to low carb diets. So the first major thing is the, the cutoff time. So 17 days, why, why did they do that? Well, in the paper they say that, you know, there's this fat adaptation period and you know, that's important for producing this increase in energy expenditure. And this is something that I see low carbers kind of fall back on whenever there's a study they don't like, they just say, well, they just weren't fat adapted. And it doesn't matter if it was three days, 10 days, five weeks, 12 weeks, they kind of always fall back to that. Apparently it's 17 days, um, according to this meta-analysis. So I started thinking about why, why the 17 days? Well, there's a few different reasons. One of them is if you read the paper, they talk about how when they had metabolic chamber data and doubly labeled water data, uh, that they omitted the metabolic chamber data. Now, what does that mean? There's a few different ways to measure energy expenditure. There's direct calimetry, which is a metabolic chamber. There's indirect calimetry, which is basically uh, using a respiratory quotient where you're uh, looking at how much oxygen someone consumes versus the CO2 they breathe out and through a series of equations, you can estimate energy expenditure. And then there's also doubly labeled water. Um, so deuterated water basically, where it's uh, a stable isotope and you can measure basically a rough estimation of energy expenditure. Now it's important to point out that when it comes to indirect calimetry and doubly labeled water, these methods are validated for uh, approximating energy expenditure, total daily energy expenditure, but they are validated by the metabolic chamber, meaning the metabolic chamber is the direct measurement of energy expenditure. The other two measurements are approximations that are only validated by the metabolic chamber data. So why would you, when both pieces of data are available, when you have metabolic chamber 
and doubly labeled water available, why would you pick the measurement that is a proxy measurement rather than the direct measurement? Well, doubly labeled water tends to overestimate energy expenditure on low carb diets. Uh, if you look at uh, one particular study that they're talking about here, which is Kevin Hall's study from 2016, where they looked at uh, a high carb diet versus a ketogenic diet, they showed an increase in energy expenditure that was much greater on, with doubly labeled water compared to what they observed in the metabolic chamber. And this is likely because much of the weight loss during the ketogenic diet was from water. Of the 2.2 kilograms those subjects lost, uh, 1.7 kilograms was from water. This causes an overestimation of the energy expenditure when using the doubly labeled water method. So again, if you omit metabolic chamber data, which shows much lower effects of a low carb diet on energy expenditure, then you can, you can show bigger effects with the doubly labeled water. But why would you do this? Again, this would be like saying for body composition, we have skin fold uh, data and we also have MRI of body fat, uh, but we're gonna use the skin fold data. It also biases these studies towards uh, the doubly labeled water studies, which can be done for a longer duration of time, whereas metabolic ward studies tend to be very, very short. Now it's important to point out that in the study, the, the forest plot of the studies less than 17 days, almost all of them favor slightly the low fat diets, virtually all of them. There's only a couple that slightly favor uh, low carb diets. But the studies over 17 days, there's only six. Two of them are from Ludwig's lab. And the other four, I'm gonna get into a little bit more and why uh, they kind of picked the data that they wanted to use. So it's important to point out that I went through each of these studies that showed that a low carb diet increased energy expenditure more than a low fat diet. In every single one of them, I looked to see, okay, did they see differences in fat loss? In every single study, they showed no statistical difference in fat loss. And in the majority of those studies that reported body composition, there was actually slightly more fat loss on the low fat diets. Now it wasn't statistically significant, but again, if you are seeing a true increase in energy expenditure, where is the fat loss? Where is this fat loss? Well, again, we've already showed that ketogenic diets or low carb diets cause an increase in loss of body water. Kevin Hall also showed that they increase protein loss or nitrogen loss in the urine and that they cause a greater loss of fat-free mass compared to a non-low carb diet. But again, isn't fat loss the metric we care about? That being said, let's go through some of these different studies that they uh, used to kind of show that low carb diets were superior uh, when it was past 17 days. So in Kevin Hall's study from 2006, he found that metabolic chamber showed a small increase in energy expenditure of about 50 calories per day when measured with the metabolic chamber. Now when measured with doubly labeled water, it was closer to 150 calories per day. Again, doubly labeled water tends to overestimate energy expenditure on low carb diets. The interesting thing is the observed effect goes exactly in the opposite direction of what Ludwig proposes as his hypothesis. Meaning, in the introduction of his paper, he says that perhaps the effect of longer studies is allowing people to become fat adapted and then you start to see this increase in energy expenditure. In Kevin Hall's study, there was an increase in energy expenditure in the first week on the ketogenic diet when they're presumably not fat adapted, according to Ludwig, which then dropped off during the subsequent weeks. Now, this could be because in an early phase of a ketogenic diet, um, you find ketones showing up in the urine and they get less and less because your gut body gets more and more efficient at handling those and using those. But are you saying a 50 calorie increase in energy expenditure per day is gonna solve the obesity crisis? And again, in this study, they showed no difference in fat loss. In fact, they showed better negative fat balance in the high carb or low fat diet. The Ludwig or Ebling study from 2018, this is something we've covered previously. They showed 
a 400 calorie increase in energy expenditure as measured by doubly labeled water in people who were on maintenance after fat loss. Interestingly, in the paper, they, it was, it was way buried in the data, but they report no difference in BMR and no difference in physical activity between the groups. Where is this 400 calorie difference in total daily energy expenditure per day coming from? Your TDEE or your total daily energy expenditure is the summation of your BMR, your physical activity, and your TEF. And physical activity encompasses your NEAT and your exercise. So they had the, I believe they wore accelerometers and they showed no difference in physical activity, no difference in BMR. So are you saying that this 400 calorie difference per day was from thermic effective food? Well, thus far, we have a lot of studies on thermic effective food showing that protein has an effect. But between carbohydrate and fat, carbohydrate actually has a high, slightly higher thermic effect of food than fat. So are you saying that all these other studies are wrong? Or is there somehow something magical that happens with TEF? Oh, by the way, TEF max is like 10 to 15% of your energy expenditure per day. They're basically reporting like 25 to 50% more TEF in total, just based on these differences in energy expenditure. They're basically reporting something that has never been observed in the literature before or since, to my knowledge. They didn't make these claims, but I'm saying that if you're not showing a difference in BMR, your basal metabolic rate, or physical activity, that increase in energy expenditure has to come from somewhere. Now, there's a study from Abbott uh, where they didn't use the metabolic chamber data, and, uh, which showed zero difference uh, when corrected for differences in energy expenditure due to the metabolic chamber. So they show in their forest plot an increase in energy expenditure in response to this low carb diet uh, in this study, but I read the study. They said there was no difference. Another study, Rumpler et al., this study went for 35 days in total. And there was various time points where they admitted them to the metabolic chamber and measured energy expenditure. At day 28 was where the difference between the low carb and low fat diet was the greatest in energy expenditures, about 200 calories per day. They reported, or they said in um, Ludwig's paper it was 285. So I'm not sure where they got that from. Maybe they corrected it. Maybe they used their own equation. I'm not sure. But on day 35, seven days later, there was no difference in energy expenditure. Now they had gone to maintenance during that time, but still, why didn't they report that? Why did they report day 28 versus day 35? If they wanna say, well, it's because that's when they were at the end of the test weight loss phase. Okay, but you included your own study, which was at maintenance and not a deficit. So how can you validate choosing day 28 versus day 35? It doesn't make sense to me. Additionally, in this study, fat loss was greater on the low fat diet by about 0.2 kilograms. Now it wasn't statistically significant, but again, if we were seeing these big differences in energy expenditure, where is the difference in actual body fat loss? In any of these studies that Ludwig cited, claiming to show increases in energy expenditure in response to a low carb diet, they don't show differences in fat loss. I would love for there to be a specific diet that increases energy expenditure by 400 calories per day. Great, sign me up. I'll be the first person to do it. I've done a low carb diet. I lost quite a bit of body water the first couple weeks, and then I lost weight at about the same rate as I would normally based on the calories. Now again, that's anecdotal, but I would love for this to be true. I would love to be able to eat 400 calories more per day and still lose body fat. But we're not seeing differences in actual body fat loss. And again, Hall's study from 2016, where they exclude the chamber data, but use the doubly labeled water data, there was a greater negative fat balance in the low fat group, despite this small increase in energy expenditure in the low carb group. And uh, they also showed a greater loss of nitrogen, as I discussed earlier. Now, there was also another study from Bush et al. Um, only the breakfast meals differed in this study. So one study did a high fat breakfast versus a, um, versus a low fat breakfast. They looked at fat oxidation and some other markers and they reported the respiratory quotient, 
which allowed uh, Ludwig to use equations to determine total daily energy expenditure. In the paper itself, there was about 100 calorie per day difference in energy expenditure max. Again, this is an estimation, not actual metabolic chamber, but again, no difference in fat loss. In fact, they lost 30% more fat in the low fat diet group or the low fat breakfast group rather, because they weren't, um, it was just one meal that was different. Now it wasn't statistically significant, but again, everything so far in these studies that Ludwig is citing showing that energy expenditure is greater with low carb diets, they're showing no difference in fat loss. And in fact, a non-significant but favoring result for the low fat diet for actual fat loss. Where is this difference in energy expenditure? In my opinion, it's likely that this increase in energy expenditure can be explained by the differences in methodology. We already talked about double labeled water, overestimating energy expenditure, and perhaps data artifact, or this increase in energy expenditure, it's not measuring body composition. So again, in Hall study, they showed increased nitrogen loss and fat-free mass loss with the ketogenic diet group. So perhaps that particular increase in energy expenditure is pulling some from fat, but also some from fat-free mass. And that's why you're not seeing differences in actual fat loss, because in the low carb group, maybe you're having fat loss plus fat-free mass loss, whereas in the low fat group, you're having mostly fat loss. I'm not sure. We definitely need more studies on this. Now, I want to be clear. I feel like I've said this a thousand times, but I'll say it again. A low carb diet is a perfectly viable methodology to lose fat. If it's sustainable for you and it allows you to be consistent with your diet, then by all means do it. I do not think it is worse than a low fat diet. Oh, by the way, there's also stuff in the middle. You can have a balanced diet as well. But I've seen very little compelling evidence that it's better. In fact, when you're looking at actual fat loss and you're talking about maintenance of fat-free mass, if anything, the data suggests that a non-low carb or non-ketogenic approach is probably better by just a little bit. Again, I don't want to assume intention, but uh, it certainly feels like, in my opinion, they kind of picked this date and the way they analyze the data to maximize the effect that they wanted to show, which is that low carb diets are superior for energy expenditure. But again, wake me up when you have fat loss and body composition results. Then, hey, if I'm wrong, I'll make a video and I'll say, hey, I was wrong. Right now, the studies just don't show it. So I know this one was really dense, guys. Um, I'm sorry. There's a lot of jargon and technical stuff in here, but it's hard to really explain without getting into the weeds a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe to the channel, and if you're a low-carb zealot, leave me a comment, because I love it when you say hi.